Hello there viewers and welcome into the Digital Education Hackathon. What it is the Hackathon, why it is digital and how it is connected with the education, we will talk later. We will have a lot of guests here and I want to mention that this hackathon is supported by the European Commission. My name is Mart Sonik. I'm the lecturer from Baltic Film and Media School and I will be the host today. But I have already uh, the panel of the two wonderful women. And um, we have already the first question as well. But before this question, I want uh, you to do introduce yourself. Uh, um, please, uh, Milena, who you are and why you are here. What is your background? Thank you. I'm Milena Bigatto. I'm from Italy. I work in a foundation dealing with the knowledge transfer. So my daily job is to help the university and research center to uh, transform their knowledge in something that can have an impact with the, within the society. And I work daily about the education. This is why I'm here. And you said it was so nice word you said before uh, we've been uh, together in the cafeteria mm -hmm. that you're the gardener, that you get the different plants and you put them together, the better soil. Yeah. It's a kind of uh, nice metaphor. Yeah, that's it. It's so what we do da daily and what we had the opportunity also with the digital education uh, um, action is has been to uh, create a garden uh, where me and my colleagues and the university uh, colleagues, we took the students like seeds and we uh, put in the ground and we help them to create something new. And so we try to uh, give them energy and the sun and the water to create something new for the society. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, Milena. Uh, Madeleine, uh, you are the neighbor. You're from Finland. Yes, what yes. What takes you here? What is your experience? <laughs> yes, so as I said, I'm Madeleine Kivikangas from UltraHack, and I've been a part, uh, due to the company, in organizing several hackathons, physical, hybrid, online, every kind of hackathon you can imagine, every theme you can imagine. This time is digital education. And our job is to help all our wonderful hosts to create an atmosphere and an event that actually can create innovation and, and new, new things. We can have the people in the audience uh, who really don't know what is the hackathon and uh, they don't want to ask such a <laughs> silly question. But I will because I'm the host. What is the hackathon? Thank you for asking. And it's actually not a silly question. Uh, traditionally, a hackathon is a word combined of hacking and marathon, so it's a sprint for coders and developers to come together. But today it's so much more. So you can join a hackathon with any background, you don't need to even know how to code. We uh, develop and, and organize hackathons for every purpose possible. It can, be, it can be technical, but it can also be education or any other topic. And the beauty of Digital Education Hackathon is that anyone is invited. So you don't need to have any, any tech background, uh, any specific requirements. Anyone can come and create something beautiful. Thank you so much. So, so as you heard from uh, Madeline, there are no silly questions. Please ask the questions. You can write them under the video and I can just get them on this pad, in this pad. So um, uh, be brave and ask whatever, whatever you like. Uh, but we have the main research question also for this short uh, session for 15 minutes and uh, this is what you can see on the screen that uh, what is the digital education hackathon uh, Madeleine already started with it but uh, maybe uh, you want to proceed. Yes, thank you. Uh, what is the digital education hackathon for me and for my colleagues and for the ecosystem? Because we hosted the, the, uh, this kind of event from the beginning. Uh, it's a kind of magic. So we started the beginning with a lot of people with different background, uh, very uh, excited to create something new. Uh, and then we helped them to create real uh, projects. Okay, so uh, it's a way to help the ecosystem to be connected because this kind of hackathon doesn't uh, involve just a student at university level, 
but also the uh, researcher in the, in the university, but also companies sometimes happen that they uh, are mentors for the students. Uh, and sometimes we have also people that try to validate the idea of the student during the hackathon. So can we imagine it's a kind of uh, um, place where people with different background together with different roles try to uh, make real an idea. And this is something that is uh, important for the ecosystem. Uh, doesn't matter if you are in Spain, in Italy, in Finland, whatever. If you have an ecosystem, you have to find a way to put the people together because just together we are able to face in the, the, the future challenges we have. So you have the real life problems, you have the yeah. students and also the professors who like to solve it. And you will solve it, you will, you, will, you will go back into the real life with it. That's it, that's it. That's what's happened to us uh, and also we will see later. But the, the thing is that also when we start to design the, this kind of action, all the actors are involved in this process. So it's not just a game for one day or two days or one week. Something, uh, uh, what happened is to the creation of a new relationship between these people. This makes us to, uh, to don't stop the creation of new ideas after the end of the, the, uh, the event. Thank you so much. Madeleine, you have the experience already from the previous hackathons. Yes. Can you, can you share it with us? Uh, yes. So we were one of the hosts in 2019, uh, a big physical hackathon, did you had a hackathon before the pandemic, and it was truly amazing. It was, uh, we had several challenges, several teams for every challenge, and it was kind of like a Eurovision vibe. Uh, we had teams all over Europe, There was all a point already world. that, de point, oh, de point, nice. I mean, you know? maybe this year, <laughs> hosts, take that into consideration for your own hackathons. Yeah, it was so nice to see uh, all these teams working globally together for a mutual goal. And I'm sure that that's what's going to happen this year as well. Why to join into the hackathon? Uh, I mean, yes, uh, I heard about the ecosystem, but still, is it uh, really valuable? Oh, where do I even begin? So many reasons. You can start <laughs> from the different target groups uh, who are connected with it and just uh, describe the value of it. Exactly. Shopping. Yes. So there are so many reasons to join. First of all, as a host uh, joining a hackathon and, and organizing a hackathon, you get to see firsthand the beautiful... There's actually no, no atmosphere like a hackathon. It's, e yeah. it's not easy to, to construct anywhere else. And you have not only individuals from different backgrounds, but you have individuals such as students, as you said, companies, experts, they all come together when normally maybe they wouldn't and uh, you really get to be a part of making a real difference for digital education, making your organi organization seen, your country seen uh, in, this, in this important topic. Um, so just to, to name a few things. About this, um, uh, about this value, what can, uh, can expect also the audience who is uh, watching us? That, um, um, how to do it, how to get into involved into the hackathon, into the digital education hackathon and this connection with the co education as well. Is it kind of the limitation for it? Not at all. So you have to think that all the kids or you, the, 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 uh, the young people you see now at school, at university now, they will be adult for tomorrow. So it's not just to uh, I don't want to say that it's something that is going to change the world. It really is. But, <laughs> uh, but this is a secret. Can, yeah, this is a secret. <laughs> By the way, the, uh, the fact that um, uh, we need to take care about the, uh, the education of those kids, those uh, teenagers, those talents, because it's also a talent scout uh, opportunity this for companies and also for researchers and uh, universe, university. Uh, it's a moment in which uh, the mentors uh, are able to um, give the value uh, to the society through these young people. So can you imagine we have a lot of people with a great knowledge 
in the university, in the companies. But uh, come on, we know that creativity uh, it's bigger in young people. So this is why uh, I think we have to, um, to support this kind of uh, event and to be part of this. And if I say I learn a lot from the young people, more than I guess they <laughs> learn from me. I don't know your experience, but in my experience, often happens. Yeah, but you can. Uh, you need to have the attention of the young people. Mm, yeah, you need yeah, to have the attention, and mm. uh, they need to be interested into the process. Mm. Uh, how to do it? Well, good question. First of all, the topic I, I think is is something that does interest because the the young people are the ones that will go through education, and we need to make it not only more digital but more inclusive fun, attractive, and ask the youngsters themselves, how do they want to learn? And I think that's one key, key topic. The world is evolving and the education needs to evolve with it. Uh, so I think from there, the host can just uh, think of their own, their own way to target that. But I think ask the youth, what do they want to see? And then you kind of have the answer and also the attention because exactly. you involve them into the process in the early beginning. Uh, we have also the, uh, the first question uh, from the audience. Thank you so much uh, for this question. Uh, this is, when is the next hackathon and where I can sign up? Good question. Do you want me to take that? Yes, of course. Yeah, sure. Uh, so the next digital education hackathon they will all be uh, in November, so 6th to 13th of November, depending on the country and the actual host that you choose to, to join. Uh, it will be some of those days, but 24 hours within that time period. Uh, so don't miss it. So you're going to uh, give the information about it. Uh, later on uh, exact uh, timetables and this. It was uh, 24 hours, you said. Yeah, uh, so 24 uh, hours, so very intense. Very intense, <laughs> yes. and people don't yeah. uh, fell asleep, or you have uh, some people sleeping somewhere, waking up, or how it works, 24 hours. Very good question. I would say the adrenaline is so high that yeah, it's difficult to it. sleep. Uh, but what's interesting about this, uh, this event is that it's several hackathons. So depending again on the concept that the host chooses, it can be 12 hours one day, 12 hours another day, six hours in over three days, but all in all it's 24 hours. So if you feel like you want to sleep a little in between, <laughs> choose one that it's divided on several days. But if you feel like you want to go 24 hours straight, that's also possible. How easy or hard is to moderate it? I mean, to be the person who, uh, put everything together and keep an eye on that and supervising it or keep the level of the, of the tempo up as well? Of course it's a challenge, but definitely not a big one and it is so worth it in the end. And I could actually give a tip here that uh, over the preparation period and all the way into the actual hackathon days, we will be hosting coaching calls weekly, we'll help you non-stop. Any questions, we're all here to help. So. Together, it's a team effort and it won't be difficult at all. If we talk about the digital education hackathon, then uh, we think that what is this, the digital, the world uh, in it? Uh, is it because we use the different digital uh, tools uh, during the um, uh, lessons or is it um, because the outcome needs to be some, uh, some, just something digital? Uh, not especially. So the idea is that uh, we need to um, improve the uh, digital education in our society. Okay, this is the main the main uh, objective. But uh, the idea of this hackathon is that you can use the digital to teach something that is not really digital. You can teach something, I don't know, biology using digital if you want. Uh, you can use digital to, to teach about also economics, why not? Or something related to ecology. But also you can um, use digital to teach how to uh, make digital something. So uh, digital is not just the, the, the focus of the, uh, the tool, but also could be the uh, subject of the tool. And the, uh, about the target of this kind of education could be, uh, could be school, 
could be uh, kindergarten, but at the same time at university level. And also, we, we don't have to forget the, uh, also the adult, because digital education uh, should involve also people that uh, is not young people, but also um, uh, long life learner, for instance. Yes, yeah, so we have the lifetime lear learning process. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to, Madeleine, do you want to add something about this tool using for the, uh, um, for some subject or tool what is uh, gonna be in the end of the day, digital? Well, Milena already put it very nicely, but I could add that the tool or the project that the teams come up with, it could help the learners, whoever it is, how old they are, learn, but it could also learn the teachers to better teach. So it can be targeted to anyone in the learning cycle, really. Yeah. Um, there's, no, there's no stopping that. Yeah, anything is possible. Do, we had some, uh, do you have some uh, feedback also from these people who are already using a kind of the uh, result of the hackathon? Yeah, Do actually, uh, yeah, actually, I met one team uh, in 2019 uh, that came up with a gamified AR solution for not only showing things in 3D, but that the students could also interact better. Uh, and uh, they were very successful, first of all, in the hackathon. And we met them later in another hackathon and actually saw them uh, establish a company later. And this is very, very usual. So we see lots of people coming in as just eager beginners and then actually establishing companies. So it's very beautiful to see. And the opportunities are endless uh, f from what it can, can bring, actually. Yeah. And also these people who are in this process, they give the feedback as well for you, Ximop. What is the feedback from them? Well, what they learn, uh, we will see also later because we have a special guest, I know. But uh, what happened in, uh, in our experience is that they uh, increase their skill in working together, uh, in work with people with different background to uh, create something uh, new together. Uh, it's something doesn't often happen mm. in, uh, at the university level, for instance, because most of them, they stay in their department, most of the students. So if you are a UX student, you stay in your department. If you are uh, people, uh, if you're a student of um, um, education, you stay in another. But in this kind of event, they stay together and they learn how to speak each other. So they find a common language, but they find by themselves. So uh, it's incredible because we, we spend a lot of time trying to, okay, how we can do, m m make them work together. But the magic happens when you put this guy together with a common problem. They speak different language, they came from different background, and something happened. Mm. And, and when you are here and you see that, it's really a kind of magic. And this is what they learn. Thank you so much, Madeleine and uh, Milena. I hope that uh, now you have a clear picture what is the Digital Education Hackathon. And uh, in the next section, we will talk about the people in the center of the digital education. See you soon.
Hello again, and I'm so glad that you're still with us. And please don't hesitate to ask the questions. So just write under the video and I can get these, uh, uh, these questions here and I can ask it uh, from our guests. And I'm glad to say hello for our new guests and new session are Andreas uh, from Germany. Hello, Andreas, and Natalia from Serbia. Who you are, you will introduce by yourself. Natalia, can you please? Um, I'm a teacher from Serbia. I work in small rural uh, school and feel the uh, focus of my interest are innovation in education. Basically, I started with uh, teaching math through art activities and uh, further on I develop uh, strategies to teach uh, math and other science subjects with technology and uh, different kind of approaches. So you will make the mathematics fun yes. and interesting. And, and beautiful. And Be beautiful as yeah. well. Yeah? Because uh, mathematics is very beautiful, very useful, very connected to real life. And usually and it's not how students see mathematics. And it's a base, of other, uh, base for other subjects, uh, for other scientists and for technology that we uh, rely so much. So it's very important for students to learn. And then um, I was struggling in the process of teaching, so I have to fi had to find different approaches. And I find, found uh, art, and actually that is uh, how So that I even teach. art is connected with the math. Yeah. Very much. Very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, Andreas, who are you and how are you connected with uh, uh, education, digitalization, maybe even with the mathematics? Why yeah, uh, I have nothing to do with mathematics. <laughs> so, um, yeah, hi, I'm Andy um, and I'm a professor for computer science education at the University of Frankfurt in Germany. And I'm, let's put it this way, I'm teaching teachers how to teach computer science. Um, to students and we're focusing especially on K-12 education um, and my research focus was uh, on immersive, uh, immersive technologies and immersive learning so um, I'm kind of on, the, on both sides of digital education on the computer science side but also on the educational technology side so yeah that's basically what I do. Regularly. Is it hard to teach the teachers? I think the teachers are the target group for, are not so easy uh, let's play together group works <laughs> well actually uh, it works quite well so those are students who are studying for becoming a teacher later on um, and it works quite well especially when you try to get in students um, so k-12 students kids um, from schools around the university into the university and then they can really try out their lessons they, they, uh, that they design so this works quite well actually so but uh, now we have here uh, teacher and we have the researcher. <laughs> so, and the question is, uh, the people at the center of digital education, how you could answer for this main research question for this session, Natalia? Well, um, digital education is our future because we rely more and more on technology. So the digitalization need to come into the classroom. And also we need to teach our students to solve problems that they will, that they will uh, encounter in their life, in their jobs. So um, we need to, technology to make our lives better. And uh, this uh, sentence is uh, very much power powerful and show how, uh, in which way the education should go, that people and uh, well-being that uh, could come with the education should be in the center of that. To teach better, then we need to have the digitalization already. What are these tools uh, that are most common, let's say, which are working well, in your opinion? Uh, there are many tools uh, today available. Uh, the question is, uh, do teachers use them in the proper uh, way, proper way yeah. or do we have developed pedagogies uh, that uh, are the teacher the train to to use so we need to train teachers and we need to do that very quickly because the, the technology is developing so we need to follow that trend uh, very quickly and um, uh, if a teacher uh, s see how the technology contribute to the teaching they they would use that so that is one way how to introduce technology to 
to education and increase the digitalization of education. Thank you. Andy, yeah, Andy is correct yeah, to yeah. say. <laughs> uh, the same question. The people in the center, what does it mean? So, well, I told you before, this is not a question. <laughs> yeah, this is a kind of a thesis. Yeah. This is a let's put this as a question. So um, we have I can delete something. The, yeah. let's, let's just ask this question. People at the center of digital education. So let's first talk people about... People at the center? Yeah, let's first, the talk about the, let's first talk about the people. Yeah, okay. We need a I question mean, mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, who are those people at the center of digital education? And, um, for example, we think most about um, students, K-12 students, um, kids at a young age, but um, we were talking about uh, lifelong learning before. So, let me ask you a question. How did you, yeah, how did you learn programming? I never learned it. That's a problem. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> so, I never learned. <laughs> yeah, and that is a thing, um, what we also need to think about when we think about digital education because we can also put a question mark be behind the digital education what do and does this even mean does this mean like teaching with different technologies so um, yeah teaching teachers how to use technology for biology or for history education or for uh, whatever or also what I come from for computer science um, and especially when we're talking about digital education we can think about okay do we mean learning about different technologies are learning with different technologies. So when we That's learn, also the question. I don't of know. Course, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we need both. We need to learn how these digital media actually work. So um, what are the concepts behind it? What is an algorithm? What is this bad artificial intelligence? And so on and so on. Um, but we also need to think about how we can incorporate uh, digital media in everyday classrooms for different subjects, for history, for biology, for mathematics, for everything. And I think that those two are actually important. This is my take on this sentence. That's interesting uh, topic you took into, was uh, that uh, how do we use uh, digital tools? Sometimes in the classroom we we are trying to avoid some of the tools as well because because uh, students can uh, find uh, easy answers uh, through the Google search and now they ask the questions from AI and we need to avoid it we need to keep it away from the classroom because then we yeah. can't do our examination or whatever the thesis is on the proper way but uh, how we can get this uh, yeah, you know, digitalization into the classroom. The, the problem is um, that, okay, so, so to quote um, famous Harvard professor Chris Didi, an educational technology is not like a fire that provides benefit from just standing there in its vicinity. It keeps us warm and stuff. No, we need to actually use it. So regardless of what technology we're talking about, um, we need to teach teachers how to use it for an actual benefit. Um, and of course, if we just purchase a lot, if we keep buying technologies and put them into schools, that won't change anything. I mean, you as a teacher, you might have an idea of how this doesn't change anything. You need to actually use this stuff. Yeah, the, what we need, uh, new pedagogical approaches, because we, we can't hide uh, art, uh, GPT track from students. Uh, they, yeah, they keep only need, the paper and yeah. dots here. Yeah. We need to, 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 <laughs> to, to teach them how to use that in a proper way. So maybe to make a project when they will take that uh, as a tool for research and make uh, some and learn something. So we need to find a way how to um, learn uh, how to teach them how to use that uh, in a proper way. That's what we need. We need you pedagogy. found already some kind of examples. Can, uh, can we talk about examples already? Um, yes, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of examples. So um, uh, I'm uh, very, uh, for, uh, I'm very uh, fascinated with, that, with this uh, artificial intelligence, and that is a question where that I uh, is going to take us, and uh, that is maybe something that I will. Uh, apply in my classroom in, in the future but for example um, uh, the cell phone can be a very good tool for uh, uh, in the search in the yeah, classroom. Yeah. For example, we had this situation, there are uh, applications that are solving mathematical equation uh, even before artificial intelligence in a second. So um, the 
the thing is not to hide that application from students, but bring them in the classroom and like, okay, let's discuss. Let us discuss what we can get from this uh, application. For example, okay, we will not solve anymore the basics uh, uh, equation. We will take some real life problem where we, we will um, a model uh, equation and then we can use the cell phone to, to, to solve that equation. But before that, we need a lot of steps to make a model of equation. So we need, we have a, a lot of possibility to think, to teach students higher concept by using technology because technology will do the basics uh, calculation for us or uh, basic research or five references or s something like that. So it, it's a very uh, advantage tool to uh, teach students uh, advanced concepts. Yeah, thank you. What do you think, Andy? Are there any <laughs> examples you already did something with the AI or something involved into the yeah, so, classroom? Um, yeah. The thing is that whenever a new technology emerges, you always make mistakes. So, for example, um, just last week I was trying out this new AI method with uh, my students. So I'm a um, K-12 K teacher as well. I teach uh, sixth grade and ninth grade. And together with my sixth graders, I was using ChatGPT and um, Blue Willow, with, uh, which is a um, variant of Midjourney, uh, so for creating pictures. And I used those two AI tools combined to create children's books. So we were having this story of um, a brave little penguin who tries to, um, who, who's always freezing. And he lives through three different adventures. And in the end, he, um, he gets like this hoodie from a girl and then he's finally happy because he's not freezing anymore. So this was like the, the main story. But now we need a children's book out of this story. And I gave this to my students and told them, hey, you can use ChatGPT and you can use this blue willow to create suiting uh, images for that, um, just try it out. And they did. Um, and that is something that I, that I see that teachers don't do that often. So um, right now, because of, this all, because of this hype around ChatGPT and artificial intelligence tools or machine learning tools, I give a lot of professional trainings for teachers. Um, and the first question that I always ask is, OK, what are your um, fears about artificial intelligence? And um, most of those are taking place online. So the chat fills with um, concerns and what might happen if we allow these tools in the classroom. And then my second question is always, OK, um, what are your own experiences when trying these tools out? And you know these films, these um, movies about Wild West with the tumbleweeds? Nothing happens. Nothing. Nobody ever tried out these tools. They just have fears. They just have concerns about what we might... We fear the things, what we don't know. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so this is a huge problem because we are scared of making, um, making faults. We are scared of doing something wrong. Just as I did, for example, my very first day of teaching at a university. I was 23 years old, so um, some of my older acquaintances were actually students of mine now. This is my very first day. We were in this future classroom with interactive whiteboards. Back in time, nobody else had these interactive whiteboards. And I was, um, I was sharing my presentation on this interactive whiteboard. And I did, I, I don't know actually what I did, like, like this flick motion, like something like this. Mm -hmm. And the whole screen flipped upside down. And suddenly, my presentation was upside down. And I couldn't get it back. I couldn't get it back. So 90 minutes straight, I was um, holding a presentation upside down and my students they were all laughing it was so embarrassing i mean now it's a cool story but back in time it was so embarrassing and so i think that is something that we really need to do that we need to create opportunities where teachers are not scared to create to to try out these exactly. new technologies yeah exactly we need to um relax <laughs> when we use digital technology nothing bad will happen in that case we have to shift uh, our teaching from the content-based teaching to the uh, problem solving to the process because uh, uh, learning need to happen all the time not just uh, by repeating some definitions or things like that but we need to uh, teach st uh, students to think th to be creative to solve problems because the problems all around in the real life emerging very quickly so we need basically to teach students that 
we and the uh, I think that uh, digital tools are very helpful in that uh, that approach. Does it mean that we don't need to teach basses at all anymore? That we only oh. going to the upper level and they can use all the technologies to solve the problems well, uh, for themselves and they just need to have another skill. Well, uh, for example, uh, when I was a student, we used the, uh, we called that like logarithm tables. It was a book where we were like uh, <laughs> tables and like there was such a so lot of numbers and we were like, there was some uh, uh, way how we uh, took for uh, how we calculated logarithms, but I don't think so that today n anyone do that. I mean that is uh, maybe in the museums <laughs> already we those books. Still have to do this. Yeah, it, but uh, we and still uh, remember. But I remember, but, but nobody do that anymore. I mean, so what is the basics of education? If students already know have uh, certain knowledge, then we need to put a higher level. I mean depends what we consider basics that is the main question <laughs> and what is um, what we what is useful for students is uh, is it uh, useful to memorize or is it useful to use something so like uh, i started with <laughs> with the pedagogy and with the approach like we need to rethink uh, our um, view of what we need to teach students we don't need to teach them everything from the start or from the basics of science. We, need, we can raise the level and then start from that and say, okay, this is the basic, a <laughs> little bit higher. Andy, what is the in the computer sciences? What is the basis they need to know, or even if it is hard to understand or looks silly because I can Google it, mm -hmm. and uh, what is this upper level what we can have with the digital education? So my approach for computer science education might be a little bit different than like traditional computer scientists because I, I like to take a view at the phenomena. So for example, we have artificial intelligence as a phenomenon of the digital world. So, do, uh, so we have um, social media as a phenomenon, fake news, the internet, the world wide web, everything. Um, and I think that we need to take different perspectives on these ph phenomena. So first of all, that is the most basic perspective a user-oriented perspective. How can I use a search engine? How can I use social media? Um, how do I identify fake news? Something like this. Also, we need to have the traditional computer science um, view, like the techno technological per perspective. How does this specific phenomenon work? So what are the underlying algorithms? What are like the basic components of an algorithm? When my lawnmower goes his way and I don't know falls falls down a hill or something like this, uh, what went wrong? What are the sensors? What are the actors? And of course now, especially nowadays, we need a third perspective perspective as well, like this let's say social cultural perspective. What is the effect on us actually? So this is my take on the students. But when thinking about the teachers, it's especially when they want to use these technologies in a classroom, we need to think about, okay, um, what do we need to teach first? Do we need to get the technologies into the classroom or do we first need to prepare the teachers for those technologies? And this is like this chicken egg problem. What do we need first? Can we have both at the same time? Do we first need to acquire, um, I don't know, virtual reality glasses or something like this? Or do we first need to teach teachers? And this is like a huge problem. So, you know, there's this other um, famous quote that I love to share with my students. Um, and it's also about this new educational technology that should enter the classroom. And this was a um, discussion at a school council. And one really concerned member at the school council said, there is no use in acquiring these new tools because we don't have any teachers to use them. And um, the fascinating thing is because this could be about virtual reality, this could be about tablets, but actually this is a quote from 1842 about the introduction of the blackboard in the classroom. <laughs> so we, we have had these discussions centuries and centuries ago. Every time a new technology comes in, um, we always, ha uh, always have this discussion. Do we need to prepare the teachers how to use it or need to, do we need to buy these technologies first? Like, what do we actually need to do? And this is something where 
your innovative projects come in because we need these innovative teachers who show other teachers, hey, we can do this amazing stuff with it. Exactly, and there is also like kind of a fear that if we use technology in education that students will, will stop to think, I mean, so, but that is impossible because our human uh, f main feature is that we think. They, so uh, students uh, already think differently, they have different kind of experience, so we need to follow that. That's simply how it should thank be. Thank you, Natalia. Uh, thank you, Andy, for coming. And thank you for inviting us. And see you soon, probably, <laughs> through the hackathon. <laughs> and also see you soon, uh, the viewers, because the next topic coming soon. The next question is why you should participate in digital education hackathon? And for this answer, I ask here um, Milena, already in, you, know, you know from the first session, um, and also, of course, uh, the person, Teresa. Teresa, hello, Teresa. Hello. Who is a winner of the last hackathon? You are the best person to tell us <laughs> why it is so uh, necessary to participate. But uh, uh, please be free to introduce yourself as well. Thank you so much. I am Teresa. I'm a master's student at the University of Trento. I'm studying human computer interaction and I won the uh, 2021 DJ, DJ Duac. And why you should participate? Well, I have a lot of amazing um, things to say because this is an amazing opportunity. First of all, you, need, you meet new people, like I met, I've met Milena, and uh, you have the, the opportunity to really express your, yourself freely. You can um, have the freedom to expose yourself, to develop which have, whichever project you have in mind, uh, to collaborate with amazing teammates, because uh, as previously said, you met you can meet other people with different backgrounds, and this is uh, the key to win the challenge. Oops. <laughs> you should um, be with other people with different backgrounds because you can learn from them, you can um, expose you yourself and your skills, uh, not only the hard skills, but also your soft skills in the group because this is super important, and also because you can actually uh, improve digital education, educational technologies, and bring something to the table from, I am a student, so my perspective is student's perspective, but of course, as Milena said before, from, from adult perspective or from children's perspective, because this is the future. And also the industry perspective. Yes. Uh, all the audience, of the members of the audience, please uh, don't hesitate and ask the questions. You can write it down of the video and I can get it here and uh, this is the last session um, now um, uh, with the guest uh, uh, here but the, not the very last session because we will have the session ask me anything session as well <laughs> but if you want to have the quicker uh, answer then please please ask there can be some um, critical question also that you told about it that it's a 24 hours intensive work yeah. 
can we solve with it or is it just a game or what it is or is it a kick off of something some of the process okay uh, uh, it's 24 hour we need to prepare the, for this but uh, you need to prepare with other people so when you uh, organize and also when you run this kind of event um, there are a lot of people came in from different uh, background and that have and that have different role in the organization that give the energy to the young talents to create. So um, a very important thing uh, for me has been the, uh, the creation of mentor groups. So uh, as Teresa also, also mentioned, um, the students are not alone in this big room and just what we are them. doing here yeah, yeah. That's the first question. Oh. <laughs> we have a 24 hours what we are doing yes let's have a pizza yeah <laughs> so the idea is to uh give them the just the uh, little knowledge to uh from specific people uh that are expert in just give the inputs not drive to the output this is very important because they are the protagonists of the hackathon. So uh, the mentors, the organizers are just the people that make the magic happen for them. But they are the star. So they are the people that really create something new. And uh, this, is some, this is why we are here. Uh, we participate to the, the, this kind of event. We host this event to, uh, to see the magic happen and to uh, give the fuel, the real fuel to these ideas. A lot of students uh, spend their time to study content, um, but we need also that they develop skills and they uh, are able to learning by doing things. And then the step further is to make this new idea real. This is why this kind of uh, event uh, as a very relevant uh, pedagogical effect on the on the students and on the society. Come on, they create something that could be used by yeah, students, by mm -hmm. teachers, by the people. Absolutely, we are eager to hear already that what was the project because uh, or what was the outcome you you did. Uh, may maybe before we will talk about outcome. Uh, I want to have some knowledge about this process also with you and your team what happens what was the problem you got from the fuel adders uh, from the gardeners uh, <laughs> and what was the process how this process was the process is um, extremely impo important because we have 24 hours so you need to brainstorm really fast in, in the beginning of the challenge and you need to come up with an idea that everyone agrees to work on it like um, at the, in the beginning, you, f you should find uh, not solutions, but problems. When you brainstorm on problems, digital education, uh, we, have, we had the sustainability, for example, topic, but every year changes. Um, you need to find problems. What is the problem now that we need to solve today in 24 hours? And then you start brainstorm about solutions and you ask your teammates if they agree with the problem and with the solution you have in mind, and, and then you start prototyping and doing together. Um, and the important part is um, staying together. So being in this um, atmosphere where everyone is welcomed and everyone, everyone's idea is, of course, taken in consideration, and every uh, member of the group is important. Uh, of course, it's not an easy process of course, because, because there is a choosing and decision. Yeah, we need to decide end. together. Yeah. We need to propose together. And in 24 hours, we didn't sleep. I mean, <laughs> we stayed up all night and we produced. But it's a, like a flow, and you s just stay there and produce something. And then suddenly you wake up from from your flow, and it's 6 a.m. and you need to go to university and present your project. And you hear the others saying that everything is kind of okay and we have the project and we have the presentation and we are ready to go. And you're not tired because you have adrenaline in you and um, the process is flowing. So 
you need to stay in the present moment with your members, with the members of the group, and enjoy the process because really, it's really fast and really amazing. And everything happens on spot. Yeah. So, what do you, th you observed also this process sometimes? Yeah. How it was uh, on the from the side. You feel that you want to come into and <laughs> say something, oh, don't do this, do this. Of course, <laughs> of, course. of course. All the mentors had this uh, feeling, oh, come on, no, don't do this because it's wrong. But on the other side, you say to yourself, they have to uh, experiment, to, to feel the failure, to feel that they are wrong. And then uh, there is the, this amazing switch uh, when they realize that they are wrong, but at the same time they uh, uh, create a new, uh, new idea, new answer to the question. So they, uh, it's also a process of empowering, you know. Most of those students uh, are very expert in technology, uh, but they don't know how to use it. So I'm good in programming. For, for what? Yeah. For what? Yeah. For what? Mm -hmm. And on the other side, there are people uh, that have a great idea, but I don't know how to do it with, with these new technologies. So um, at the beginning, when you uh, look at the table and you look, I don't know, a developer with a psychologist, with an economist, it's look a joke. <laughs> okay, so, oh my goodness. Very tricky but, to put together yeah, these people. Yeah, To but, understand on the common level. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the people that came to this kind of event, uh, like also we discussed, are very open to uh, uh, to uh, to be inclusive with the other uh, with the other way to see the world. Okay, so uh, it's um, this is at the beginning is always we say, oh my goodness, what is going on? This it's impossible. Most of the developer uh, have not real social skills, uh, how we can manage this, uh, but there are people on the other side that are very good in this. So for instance, psychologists or sociologists. Uh, so they, would you put together and they are able, this is uh, uh, amazing, they are able to work together. Sometimes happen that uh, um, there are some conflict. This is when we, uh, as a mentor, uh, we go to, uh, to the team and we help them to solve if the conflict is very high, it's very difficult to solve. But most of the time, uh, they have a path. And during this path, they found something that is wrong. They, they, uh, they found a solution. If they have a uh, uh, conflict, they uh, experiment negotiation. It is not common. And this is what happened in real life after university is finished. When you go to, to the real world, uh, you cannot choose. It is choose a daily your... life, work life. Yes, really. that's it. That's it. You always have some kind of the conflicts and then you yeah. need to solve them. You need to put them on the table. Um, Teresa, what was the problem you really solved? Uh, in the beginning, was, was the problem definition in the beginning? And what was this solution? What what they found out? At the beginning, uh, we thought about education, the present education. And uh, we felt that in high school, for example, uh, we had these very complex um, ideas that weren't like really understandable from our point of view, like for example, maths or physics or history, in my point <laughs> of view, in my experience. I don't know why I, I don't remember really well history. Um, and so we agreed on this problem. We don't really grasp the concept behind some uh, ideas, especially if it's complex. And we decided to build on that. How do we uh, concretize these complex ideas? How do we let uh, students, in this case, see, visualize these as abstract concepts? And that's why we found out that uh, aug augmented reality is actually helpful in this case. And we used augmented reality to let students visualize um, complex 
issues, for example, history, maths, biology, physics. How do you visualize it? Through the mind um, maps? Or what, what are these? No, we created uh, cards, hexagonal yeah. cards, that can be combined. And with a um, device, a smartphone or an iPad or a tablet, uh, you point on them and you see 3D objects. When you um, see the 3D object, then you understand that you can merge them. And with merging them, you can create other concepts. For example, our MVP that we created in the 24 hours um, was like two balls. Uh, we had uh, one yellow ball and one blue ball. And when connecting them, it created uh, a green ball. So this is like a silly example, but you can actually visualize, visualize everything, uh, starting from colors to other complex situations. And when you merge more than two cards, three or four cards, you're actually learning by doing, as Milena was saying. And vis visualizing and doing in the same time can actually help with understanding, but also with memorization. And it's uh, also good way to engage students because it's uh, it's actually a game uh, so we have gamification also easy to understand easy uh, to understand yeah. easy and also what the others were saying as teachers cannot actually use technologies but uh, we thought about having workshops um, for them and to like understand how augmented reality works but it's really easy it's like an app um, with the camera and you just point on cards that are physical so you can play with the cards and look at the results. So your result is already a few cards after this 24 hours of hackathon. Yes. Not only the idea but already some kind of the yes. examples of the solution and now you just need to produce more and more exactly. uh, cards and solutions uh, to uh, visualize the the object, the card. The yeah. problems, mm -mm. The, the objects which are not so so easy, which are complex. And this is why this hackathon actually works. Because in 24 hours you have the time to actually prototype something. And the prototypes can be not um, like digital prototypes because sometimes in the group you don't have like computer scientists that can program something that specific but also you can produce other things for the host to see and to judge your project so you are really really free to expose yourself with everything the prototype and the idea and the problem the users and so on and you are not just the winner and your team but uh you're going further. It's uh, not going to stop inside of the university, but uh, you're going to have kind of a startup uh, project. Uh, yes, for exactly. The future. Can you talk about it? How, yes. we, which are the, uh, the next steps of, uh, of this uh, hackathon of product you, you just made? We are extremely lucky because in Trentino, in Italy, we have a lot of organizations uh, following this type of project, for, ex for example, Milena. And we started this uh, startup lab in uh, um, School of Innovation in Trento, where they teach us how to um, create a startup. So they teach us the basic of economics, so the basic of the basic steps and projects and of the project. And with the, the addition of other members, like uh, one girl from management and so on, um, we actually created uh, the startup. Today we have the pitch, like tonight in Italy, we have the pitch in front of investors of these projects. And if we win... I wish you the, the, you. the very best. <laughs> Thank you so the much. Very best. And if we win, let, let's see, I mean, we were eager to move on with this project because we strongly believe in it. And we know it works because we actually validated the, the, the problem, both with DJ Duak that we won, uh, but also with real teachers and real students. So we know it works. Thank you. Uh, there is a one question also from the audience. Thank you so much. I see it. Um, what encouraged you to participate in the hackathon? And how do you think students should be encouraged to participate? Uh, such a question, we have another question more, but uh, uh, I need to have the short answer from you okay. because we need to close this session and then the next session is ask me anything session. Mm -hmm. But how to encourage? And the first... 
Okay, uh, in, mm, there are different yeah. people that we need to encourage to become part of this scheme. Uh, so what is the, what we call the very proposition of students to attend this kind of event? Uh, well, um, there are different ways in which the university can, uh, can give a value uh, to the student. Of course, there is the more traditional give credits for their career. <laughs> but I think that is not the real reason why the student came to, the, to an hackathon. So uh, people that, the student that came to an hackathon, they are looking for other people like them, they want to solve a problem. This is the, 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 uh, the, main, uh, the main value uh, they perceive. Uh, at the same time, what they get from this kind of uh, event is to meet other people, um, uh, empower, empowering, because uh, it's a challenge. So it uh, doesn't matter if you win, no? because, okay, there is a win, but also other people attend the, the, the event. And what I say is that usually I take care about not the winner, but the other guys. Uh, and what happens is, doesn't matter at the end who is the winner, okay? At the end of the day, the, the few minutes before the, the winner is, all the people, all the students are proud about the result. So uh, I think that it, th this is another value that they came from the, uh, the event. The other is, um, is uh, about uh, other skills related to the uh, working together. We talk about this. Um, and the thing is, when you uh, learn by doing, this is the most important word, I think, uh, you understand that you are learning so you have the power of your learning and this self-assessment of your um, skills improvement is something that's very powerful for, the, for young students. So uh, this is the energy, it is not uh, knowledge energy, but it's uh, empowering them to take the, another uh, challenge. So uh, let's see, let's candidate for this uh, startup lab. Because they went to the startup lab, but they have been selected for the startup lab. So they had to be uh, selected from a committee. So, uh, but they decide to apply. This is the, the, what, they, uh, what they get. For the mentors, uh, the mentors came from different uh, uh, place of the uh, organization of the society. So for instance, there are company that came to the hackathon to seek the young talent to hire. <laughs> So this is good for the company to, uh, because they can see for 20, 10, 24 hours, people really work and they see uh, what is the, 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 the capacity of improvement, work, working group, and uh, uh, not only the knowledge. And so uh, uh, this is, I think, the, the very proposition of these uh, different actors uh, mixed together uh, make the magic. Yes, surely it's not the prices at the end. We, we didn't care this about the This is the process, price. but it's exactly. really motivates. It's the experience. You are with your colleagues, you are, we are, you are with other people, and you are laughing together. You are there together in this flow, in this process. And actually, it really helps with um, your role. I mean, you don't actually know your role in groups when you are not experiencing it. I have a background in psychology, but when my colleagues asked me to participate, I asked myself, but what is my role in this group? I don't have any, I don't have anything to do here. I mean, I'm just here to help you, but I don't have the hard skills. And they just told me, don't worry, just join with us. And actually it was extremely important for me because I start, I've started to understood my my process, my career goals, and that was extremely important for me because it can change the path sometimes. Thank you so much. I hope that uh, now uh, our audience, dear viewers, can understand why should they participate in the digital education hackathon, but also we talked about what it is, the digital education hackathon, and why the people are the in the center 
of this uh, process. Now we will have the short break. I see you in the, in the next broadcasts and uh, we, we're going to have the session named Ask Me Anything session. See you soon.
Welcome back, everybody, in the uh, DG Edu Hack uh, webinar. My name is uh, Krzysztof Fenyvesi. I work in the uh, STEAM for Edu cluster of uh, Tallinn University. And um, this uh, whole webinar uh, was very well matching uh, to the profile uh, of our unit because uh, we really seek uh, for novel solutions uh, when uh, teachers, students, uh, educators, parents can match and come together with uh, innovative companies uh, and not only companies but uh, every kind of startups and uh, uh, have uh, big problems uh, solved uh, together. And uh, I think uh, this is really uh, also one aspect of the uh, DigiEdu hack. And um, I already uh, listened to uh, your experiences, uh, your, your stories, and it was uh, very exciting to uh, see your uh, different perspectives. So uh, you experienced the same event. However, uh, you, you had uh, an experience of a participant and an experience uh, of, a, of a host. So to see these two perspectives, uh, that was definitely very interesting. And you already shared um, a lot of, lot of stories about this, but this is really the ask me anything session. I mean, not ask from me, but ask from you anything. And this is the session where I really would like to encourage uh, all those who are still with us or just switched into this very session because you want to, they want to ask uh, from you anything. So this is, this is really an opportunity and uh, I'm sure that uh, maybe uh, you are a little bit uh, already exhausted because there are cameras around and uh, you, you needed to speak uh, a lot and maybe you are excited that what we will ask from you, what is this anything uh, gonna be. So uh, first of all, uh, I would like to call uh, the uh, audience, the participants to become really interactive because this is also digital technology uh, provide us uh, the uh, opportunity uh, to interact directly on time online. So make your make your questions. I will receive uh, these questions on this uh, wonderful uh, iPad and uh, I will definitely uh, put your question on the floor and ask um, our participant, winner and host uh, your questions. So I really would like to uh, see your questions. And uh, until uh, um, our audience are also engaging, uh, I uh, started to think about that, uh, of course, uh, we, we met uh, already uh, sometimes and um, I got some impression about your personality, your, your character and um, what I understood about you, uh, I, I wouldn't describe you as like uh, very uh, tech savvy people or like technomaniac uh, people. Mm -hmm. However, you are a winner of a DigiEdu hack and you are a host of DigiEdu hack. So what's your relationship to technology at all? How do you see technology in your own life? Because this is, this is the ask me anything question. So I'm really curious about your own very personal perspective. So technology in your life, Teresa. I think technologies are really helping us in, in our everyday life. And it's really important to let them come into our life like easily uh, without any pressure like we need to explore we need to research okay. a lot and also what uh, other people are were saying like artificial intelligence needs a lot of uh, research yeah. and regulations and okay. rules Th this is this is I, I can always sign up uh, what <laughs> what did you say but I asked what is in your life so not in, in general life, okay. in society but but you as Teresa Teresa and technology let's <laughs> let's let's have it this is the ask me anything well, question so okay. really I, I want to ask you this I just make an example uh, last month I um, had my computer broken I needed it to be repaired I, as a nightmare. <laughs> it was yeah. extremely awful because oh. I had an iPad yes. and I had to do everything it's on funny. the iPad yeah. I had Zoom meetings and they were fine, but uh -huh. also I had to do presentations. How can you do it on the iPad? Yeah. And then I also had um, not to, not to take. So, also so what, a, what a hacker, a DigiEdu hacker, doing in this very terrible situation? I had to adapt. I had oh. to ask others to help me because I couldn't do any present uh, the presentation on the slides. So I just adapted and asked and then my computer came back and then everything was fine <laughs> but that's how technology is uh, in my life i need my computer and my telephone 
I need like internet because um, uh, my university is on internet. Like yeah. I need slides. I need to be yeah. connected on Zoom. I yeah. need um, social media too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we need DJ to work for yeah. this also. Uh, so, so you agreed with me that yes. uh, you are not like uh, this very techno maniac person, no. though. You cannot imagine uh, your life without technology. Exactly. Uh, this mm. is, I, I can admit, uh, just in between us, that is also the situation with me. Um, <laughs> I, I could feel really uh, bad uh, without uh, my, my phone or without this iPad where I can keep in contact uh, with the participants and where I ex expect uh, some questions. Um, and uh, how, how is it with you, uh, Milena? Are you, are, do, would you describe yourself like a, like a techno, uh, techno goddess? No, not at all. I'm not good in writing code. Uh, never, never tried, but never, uh, never say never. Uh, for me, uh, technology is a tool to find new solution mm -hmm. for all the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, think about the uh, power that the the solution uh, that student like uh, Teresa can develop for um, other students that are, have some problem of inclusion. Mm -hmm. I don't know, people that cannot hear mm -hmm. or uh, people that are, are not able to reading something. Mm -hmm. So for me technology is really something that can make our society more inclusive uh, and uh -huh. give the opportunity uh, to the, the other people to see something different. Can you imagine technology uh, like the, the one that Teresa is talking about, but also our uh, uh, colleagues before, uh, when you live in uh, uh, far away from big country, f from big cities, uh, but you are able to see, I don't know, some uh, big uh, arts buildings, or you are able to experiment some um, diving in the ocean uh, or talking with other people on the other side of the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is technology for me. Yeah. This is the, 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 the way we, uh, we solve the problem. Mm -hmm. So Andy, uh, before, uh, talk about the board. So, uh, so it happened when, when, when the, the technology change. Well, we as old people, we feel it be uh, uncomfortable, okay? But um, the uh, the MP3 was not the end of the music. Uh, Spotify is not the end of the music. Yes. Okay. So the yes. music is still there. Yes. So the education. More than ever, still, maybe yeah. in, in some sense, and in, in some many sense, yeah. people's lives. Yeah. So, why not use yes. these great technologies okay. to make the education? Yeah. I, 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 I see your point and uh, we will definitely need to return to the accessibility and inclusion yeah, questions because that's, that's one of the key topic, uh, one of the key category of, uh, of this uh, DigiAdu hack because there are, there are categories in yes. this, uh, in this um, um, challenge and we, we definitely will need to go into that categories because I think that's going to be extremely important but before that again this is the ask me anything uh, session so I really want to uh, not too deep but a little bit in your in your private uh, opinions yeah. and even even into your private life if you don't <laughs> uh, mind so okay. I know Milena that you are a parent Right? Yes, and education it. is really about bringing up yeah. uh, next generation. Parents uh, play important yeah, role. Uh, however, if we have child or not, that's not the main point here. But if uh, we are talking about education, that's like growing up, and and also today uh, education is really uh, not not only for the children, right? So we can see that everybody is a learner in the yeah. in the in the whole society. Mm -hmm. But uh, returning, uh, for example, to this uh, first steps with technology, and I really mean it literally, because we can see really toddlers are uh, not uh, grabbing uh, like uh, maybe a very uh, simple o o analog object, but maybe they grab a phone and they start uh, make their first steps and then <laughs> other phones are recording these first steps and then uh, it's shared uh, in yeah. billion views and maybe there are some funny fails <laughs> and then it uh, becomes really viral. So, so, so this is whole like really 
uh, go going um, beyond uh, every kind of what, what we can imagine. But how, how do you see as a parent? Because I, I, I heard uh, and I, I, I'm a parent too, that uh, for example, my wife and me, we have very different opinions. I, I recognize that my wife is a little bit more worrying uh, to uh, what if they watch too many videos and uh, what is it the right uh, content or not. And I uh, more that, okay, they must find out is it is it right or not and they they need to build up uh, their criticism so uh, what's your very uh, personal, personal point of view as a parent yeah. and and um, uh, teresa uh, what what do you think uh, also about this uh, kind of what what is on stake when we talk about uh, children's first steps and technology okay so so ask me okay anything. i want to tell you something that happened to me a few days ago okay my daughter is eight years uh, old uh, she's taking class on Friday afternoon uh, with some other kids. It's not an official class from the school. We organize uh, with the university and with the local NGO. Uh, and they take classes on coding, but not just to uh, write code, but they, uh, they make an experiment with uh, robots and with website too. So uh, we went uh, to the mountain and we took picture and I say to my daughter, oh, honey, you can put in your website because you develop a website during this uh, camp, Friday camp. And she told me, no, mama, never. Uh, the teacher told me that it's important don't put on the internet picture of me, okay? because it's not safe for mm -hmm. our family. Okay. She teach me how to use mm -hmm. in, in a good way the technology. <laughs> so wow. yes. the point is not the technology, but how we use it. And if we are able to teach this very easy, simple principles to, this, to, to the young people, they're gonna teach us how to use it in our daily life. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that is, was a really um, a good learning for you yeah. also. Uh, yeah. So you are not only yeah. just um, uh, an expert, but 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 you need to learn even even from those who, whom we don't think as an expert, right? Yeah. Uh, but okay. the thing is, we need to create for those kids the opportunity to learn. Yeah. And there are different actors, the university uh and ngos that are very involved in this evolution of uh, uh digital uh, skills so we need to uh, to to um, um to create the good connection among all those actors for instance educators that are very good in pedagogical uh, aspect and also the developer the work together uh and teach to the to the young students to 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 mentor students if you teach to a kids you teach also to his family okay mm. thank you uh, teresa uh, so the question is uh, switch it on or switch it off <laughs> so wha what's your what's your uh, standpoint in this very okay. radical extreme opinions uh, i think it's not very easy to regulate it i mean it depends uh, on the family and on the people in the family <coughs> um, i think it should not be an addiction. So if we see that the, the child really, really needs it, needs the, the iPad, the tablet, the, ta the cell phone, the television, for example, to eat, that's strange. I mean, it's not very good for the child. I'm not sure about that. I'm not a parent, but uh, okay. from the outside, I would say that it's okay, technologies are okay, they can be used, there are a lot of inter interesting things, like games, um, uh, things to learn and ways to be connected. Also, if you have uh, very far away grandparents, for example, you want your kids to stay connected with them. But it should not become an addiction, so you need to regulate it. You are, a pa you are the parent and you need to create rules for these devices. And yes, of course, they will use them in, in schools, the tablet classes, for example. They're going to learn on a tablet or iPads, and that's okay. But uh, 
the ch children in general need to understand the difference between uh, using technology in a very effective way and uh, being addicted to them, not living their life because uh, I'm also the, the use of telephone for taking pictures and videos every day, every time. It's um, not very good for the child, especially for the, chi the child's personality because the parents um, like uploading photos and videos yeah. on the web it's uh, the parents is actually creating the online personality of their child and that's against the child's right i mean the child has the right to grow its his or her uh, personality alone without the input of the online community and of course, we had uh, parents taking pictures like on our birthday okay. or celebrations and so on, but it's like a picture, you print it if you want, and it's not, uh, of course, it's not like having your telephone like mm -hmm. 24 hours <coughs> on you, it's a bit disturbing, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what you tell me, uh, this suggests me that uh, this DigiEdu hack um, as, a, as a process is not uh, only uh, just to create uh, new tools or, or come up uh, with an innovation, but uh, it's no. really a, um, an opportunity uh, to, to reflect uh, mm -hmm. on, on technology and also to reflect uh, on these new situations, uh, what we, uh, not like we, but like humanity, uh, mm -hmm. never, never before uh, experienced. So we are really the first ones uh, to to create uh, some kind of um, uh, thoughts, some kind of reflections on experiences, but never ever had anyone before us, and uh, this this is also uh, very interesting uh, to to hear that uh, this uh, this DigiEdu hack also gave you opportunity uh, yes. uh, to to think about uh, these very uh, big questions actually, which uh, there is there is probably. Uh, no good or bad answer and, mm. and at least uh, we, we can't know, we can't validate uh, these mm. answers. Maybe time will tell uh, mm. if uh, we uh, went uh, to a, a good path or, a, or, a, or is it yeah. a dead end or, 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 or this, what's going on. This is very true and uh, the thing that we, uh, uh, we do during this kind of event is spend a lot of time to think about the problem. Uh -huh. Okay, mm -hmm. so we need to focus, and Teresa also mentioned this, we need to understand what is the real problem and uh, who has this problem. So um, a teacher had the problem to uh, teach, uh, I don't know, biology, so we can give them a tool, a digital tool to help them. Or, I don't know, parents have the problem of addiction, so how we can help the parents to uh, understand the rules, the good rules for uh, to give to their kids to uh, be uh, less addicted to the, uh, to the to the digital, but not just to the digital. For instance, also to other things. To be addicted is not good. Doesn't matter if it's digital or not. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the point is, during this uh, kind of event, we we stop a little bit. And we say, okay, we have a problem. Digital can help us to solve this problem and we can do it together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not just to create a technology, but the key point is that the education is not the tool, it's the process. So when Teresa say that um, they validate it, they have to, um, uh, give workshop to the teachers to use the, the, the product. You see, it's not just an object they create, that we create in this hackathon. We create, of course, something real, but that enable some changes in our society. This is why it's, it's so important to, to, uh, to, to host this kind of event. Okay. Now I, now I start to uh, start to understand that uh, why I want to become a participant and the host uh, too. So I really uh, feel that the, these uh, um, uh, motivations are are growing in me, and this is still uh, the 
Digiadu Hack um, webinar, and this is the Ask Me Anything uh, session. And uh, if I would be you, I would definitely ask a lot of uh, questions through the YouTube, but I'm not you, and I'm sitting here in the studio, so I <laughs> do these questions here right now, but you really uh, have the opportunity because it's live stream now, so you can also uh, engage uh, with us uh, through this uh, uh, tablet. However, um, now let's talk more about this process. Uh, mm -hmm. That, that that's, uh, was really interesting for me because um, there are uh, different paths uh, to to be choose uh, also in, in to, to choose uh, also in this hackathon. So uh, there are hackathon categories. Uh, first of all, what was your category, uh, Teresa? It was about um, sustainability, right? Sustainability. Yeah, sustainability. Okay. So um, and uh, Milana, you mentioned um, uh, it was a sound a little bit utopic to me that how technology uh, will connect uh, everyone on on the earth. And of course, this this is this is this is yeah. the capacity. This this is the capacity we have at hand. Really, an exceptional capacity never before ever happened. However, I can see also a lot of people uh, who who are not we and they don't have it at hand and uh, they just been excluded uh, from this whole global village uh, kind of concept because uh, maybe uh, they don't have this latest uh, uh, type of uh, phone or know the operational system or no compatibility or you know or not even have uh, this this needed technology so it can be also a barrier and i can see as a category here that uh, access and availability that's 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 one uh, category uh, to uh, to create uh, some kind of um, uh, ha hacking uh, this this question so uh, what what's your what's your point uh, uh, about um, for example if access and avail availability so let's go through these categories and you you have experience as participant and host so uh, what you uh, identify uh, like 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 a problem or, or, or some kind of motivation to uh, engage in this category. So what's the importance for you, for example, this access and availability? Uh, Teresa, please. Uh, right now I see two main problems. One of them uh, is related to not having a device. Uh, not everyone has a computer, a tablet, a smartphone. Some of the people in the world doesn't like don't have anything in their house and they don't have an internet, for example. So that's a problem if uh, we want to grow as a community in the world in general, of mm -hmm. course. Um, the other pro problem with the um, access accessibility, and we have already spoken about it, is teaching the teachers. Because if uh, the teachers are, the teachers in general, people, have uh, smartphones but don't really know how to use them, don't really know how to access uh, various tools uh, online. It's a shame because um, we have a lot of services online and I see as accessibility also under this point of view. Mm -hmm. Helping people understand uh, their, their usage, how they work, why uh, do we want to like pay in our bank account, in our um, bank app and not going to the bank directly. Mm -hmm. Why do we want to um, set up a Zoom meeting and not uh, being in presence? Yeah. So that's really important. So, so technology uh, can uh, be also a mean of uh, exclusion, but, mm. but it can be also a tool uh, to uh, not to reproduce inequalities, but but uh, helping uh, everyone uh, to to get the equal access. So this yes. is what I understand, and uh, we 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 probably need uh, this kind of hacks uh, of the access yes. and availability. So next question uh, goes to you, uh, Milena. That. Um, uh, I think these learning spaces are really uh, transforming and you are expert uh, also in training the trainers. So uh, how do you see this area, these uh, learning spaces and pedagogies uh, from the Digi Aduhack uh, viewpoint? Okay, um, I had the opportunity to work with the team uh, in, uh, at the University of Trento uh, dealing with the uh, um, Fab Lab and all the uh, learning by doing uh, pedagogy. 
So uh, what I learned from them um, is that this kind of uh, place when, where you uh, learn are very relevant for uh, the effect of the learning path uh, in the participant. And it's not just because we have um, uh, uh, we have a wow uh, setting, but because this kind of place, like a fab lab, like the um, maker space, where the people l uh, had the opportunity to see uh, physically something, uh, opened the, the the opportunity to learning. For uh, for students, so um, we have we put a lot of energy to create this kind of uh, places, and also uh, when we uh, talked before, uh, we met the, the 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 atmosphere. It's made also by the place. Okay, so the 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 uh, it's not just for the agathon. Also, if you think about the the classroom, they are changing. So it uh, doesn't make sense to have a laptop a say, sit on, 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 uh, uh, on your chair and look the board in front of you. So uh, also this kind of um, uh, environment, learning environment will change in the future. That's very well connect uh, to the next category, which is learning experience. So we have um, still uh, like um, five-ish categories left and uh, maybe some three minutes uh, to <laughs> get uh, people uh, excited about this category. So what about learning experience? How do you see it, uh, Teresa, from the GIADUHEC uh, point um, of view? Learning ex experience is um, a great way to engage people because, um, at least in Italy, we don't have a really great way of teaching things. It's, as Milena was saying, it's really standard. You just stay there and learn. But we need to concentrate on the experience because nowadays we need to engage with um, students but also people who want to learn something more, long life learning of course, and to create um, amazing experience we need to get them connected. I mean we need um, technologies to help them get, get into the technologies. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And to get connected mm. and also to get engaged, uh, that's yes. also very much connects to competences. So next mm. category is individual competences, digital of competences. Course. How do you see this? Just very briefly. Okay, digital competences doesn't mean just de developing things or writing coding. Digital competences means also to work together. Uh, in the DigiComp framework created by the European Commission, there are a lot of skills that make available the, 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 uh, the, uh, the content of coding and developing uh, to make uh, uh, this kind of uh, content available for uh, all the people. So you need to be uh, competent in communication using these tools. You have to be uh, competent also in thinking about sustainability, also economic sustainability. Because during this kind of hackathon, the people, the, the participants, are asked also to think about the sustainability of their projects. Absolutely, yeah. and critical thinking, and what about yes. so organizational capacities? Just uh, some words about, because you are also working on organizational level, yeah. so how technology can boost uh, organizations? Okay, uh, organiz in general, the, the technology uh, is, an able, is an enable of competencies. So if you are able to, uh, if you know the knowledge and the skills of your of the people around you technology can help you to make evidence absolutely and and it can be also become a nightmare i know <laughs> that uh, so so how, how, to, how to get those technologies which really boost organization and well-being uh, and um, um, uh, so that's why it's a very important well-being in digital education and also we can see the emergent tech uh, for education. So, uh, Teresa, uh, what about well-being uh, and education, the DG hack context, just very shortly? Well-being is uh, also related to learning experiences, as we said before. It's, uh, uh, we need to have well-being in using 
uh, yeah. digital education. We need to feel well with our uh, technologies, feel good with our technologies, and we need to be secure about them. Um, also, is uh, connected to psych psychological yeah. well-being, um, mental health, mental health, physical health. Physical as health well. is Absolutely. also connected yeah. with it. And I think there are a lot of open questions here, <laughs> just like with the data-driven uh, education. So this is really a unique possibility that now we're not only talking about the big data, mm. but we can really bring uh, this actual data uh, into the classroom and also out, uh, uh, everybody out from the classroom <laughs> and 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 get immersed into the data so this is exceptional and there's my favorite category comes which is the other category <laughs> but i think uh, we have no time to describe uh, now that what uh, anything can be uh, in the other category so this really open up uh, the the view open up the panorama uh, for the digiadu hack hackers so i really would like to invite everybody to join uh, to uh, DigiAdu Hack, become a host like Milena, and become a winner like Teresa. So the floor is open and the webinars uh, will continue. So I was really happy to meet with you uh, today. Thank you. Thanks a lot for everybody uh, who joined. And please uh, log in uh, and follow up uh, and uh, join us next time as well. So thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.